I'm playing quite a lot from CDs that have either been uh, discontinued from Candle Library or else bought in a Candle charity shop uh, for the reason really that uh, Candle Library is ahead of Exeter. They've, they've stopped uh, CDs. I don't know what's going to happen in, in Exeter, but I, I hope to talk um, some 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 point, possibly on air, but I'm, I'll certainly have a, a quick word with the, the Lost Chord, which is the show that starts at 12. Uh, they uh, used to be, I think, up from the stacks. They've certainly got a library connection, but I'll, I'll, I'll find out a bit more late, later on. Um, the, 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 the relevance to other bits and pieces being that um, my play, CD Walk, is based on the idea of uh, walking around central Exeter. I think it would work in several other cities or city centres. Um, looking at where the CD sales used to be or music retail could go back to uh, singles or vinyl. Or, you know, vinyl is still there to some extent, but not, not in the way that it was. Um, and then asking the question, what might happen with education? Because there's probably going to be student accommodation and new building of student accommodation. And if um, music has moved into streaming and the cloud, why will education stay requiring so much student accommodation? I mean, there's obviously a question about the campus as well, but for the purpose of walking around the city centre, uh, it's the student accommodation that is evident. Uh, and if you if you do look on um, W E N O T N O on Twitter, um, there's a retweet of a, a tweet from Peter Armstrong. That this is following on tweets which I started, similar in, in content to what I've just said. And um, P Peter Armstrong is an emeritus professor at Leicester from the Business School. I, I think he's mostly accounting. It's what he has studied. Um, he's very critical of current policy. Uh, there's various redundancies going on amongst the staff there, I think. Also, from what I know of the business school there, at one point it was, it was very much into critical management studies. And I think there was a move from somewhere else to make it a bit more mainstream, something like that. I'm, I wouldn't be certain what's going on there, but... The, there may be reasons to, to query his point of view, but it's, it, I think he makes a lot of sense. Um, on it, from his other tweets, he's, he's queried various aspects of the policy at, at Leicester, and including the redundancies regarding the buildings. But I think he's previously found that there's, um, if, if various projects were cancelled, there would be a cancellation fees and so the, the redundancies make, make more sense from some people's way of thinking. Anyway, the, the tweet I, th I think is worth reading out. Um, this is from Peter Armstrong. You, his, his Twitter is Peter, Peter Art 18228396. But you, the easiest way to find it is to fire, fire the We Not Know, I would think. Anyway. Uh, I think we inherited a residential study model from a time when there were fewer universities, far fewer students and no internet. If the system was set up from scratch today, most students would study from home and mostly via internet. And there's, there's other ones where he, he, he does talk about the, um, the reasons why face-to-face -face is still very much favoured by... Uh, universities and the government policy comes into this Twitter sequence as well. 